So, we are going to cover this under spoken tutorials ok. So, we uh, let me give a brief overview of um, the, the work we do uh, in this uh, project for which uh, we want people to work on. We have uh, two projects the first one I will talk about is uh, FOSI. How many of you are familiar with this project FOSI? Anybody familiar with this ok. This is uh, this uh, FOSI stands for free and open source software for education. So, we have a big group at IIT Bombay and we are looking at some select uh, software systems. Uh, are you people familiar with MATLAB ok. Now, Scilab is an equivalent of that, but it is open source ok. The other thing is you see people re recognize the symbol Python ok. Python is another group in which another software in which we have good amount of activity. We have um, a software called OSCAD electronic design automation is anybody from electronics here electrical electronics telecommunication there are some of you thank you. This is for uh, circuit design we have a group that works on uh, coin war these are optimization ok and um, uh, we have um, about 5 6 people in each of these groups they are all full time staff members full time employees. Some of them could also be doing uh, simultaneously M tech for example. Some of them joined as, uh, as uh, uh, staff members in the project and after a while they wrote gate got admission to do M tech and uh, they typically take about um, uh, 3 years to finish that M tech and their, uh, their work is supported by the project. By the way this is applicable to all the projects not only mine, but every one that you will see that you will work on. And um, it turns out so uh, while the regular M tech students take 2 years the people who work on this may take 3 years. Um, it turns out very interestingly the people who worked on 3 year projects uh, 3 year M techs actually got better jobs than people who got you know 2 year intake because the industry considers them as people with um, practical experience. So, that that is something that uh, you will see in IIT all the projects uh, there is a lot of practical experience and um, uh, so, FOSI is one project um, uh, our people come up with uh, instructional material to train the public. For example, uh, you already know that there is something called Python. Okay, Python is already well developed, it is already available. So, what are we doing? So, our people um, uh, do everything required to promote it, to create documentation, to conduct workshops, okay, to create documentation, to conduct workshop, to answer uh, student uh, questions, to do uh, mapping, for example, map uh, the curriculum. You probably know that CBSE introduced Python in the place of C and C++. I do not know if you are familiar with that, you are aware of it. As a matter of fact, CBSE made it even mandatory, right. Later on there were protests, so they made it optional. So, um, who is going to give the training for these people? So, our Python team is actually in a position to do that, ok. So, training and there are in some cases new software is developed. For example, this uh, OSCAD that you see the um, uh, the one on the left hand side the one for um, this is the logo of OSCAD uh, which is an electronic design automation tool and uh, it is an open source alternative something very expensive um, like ORCAD, Cadence you know various uh, commercial tools that are available uh, can be replaced by uh, this software ok. Uh, we have another project called um, spoken tutorial. So, um, this is a uh, this is a methodology that we have to um, conduct uh, to, to provide IT training in a massive way to the uh, students. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, if you see this is actually the list of students who are uh, trained on uh, uh, in various states for example, the first one is Tamil Nadu. We have trained so far about 92,000 students on various 
uh, software, mainly uh, FOSS. It could be Python, it could be LaTeX, it could be PHP, it could be C, Java, it could be uh, OSCAD and so on. Um, so next is uh, Gujarat for example, Maharashtra in various states you can actually see the number of uh, people who are getting uh, trained. Um, if you see here, so we have the India map and you say take some, let us take Maharashtra. So we have through 841 workshops we have trained 43,000 people and if you click this workshop you actually see who are the people who are undergoing the workshop on what day and so on, right. So this uh, spoken tutorial uh, workshop is a self-learning methodology where students can be trained through two hour workshops and um, uh, it is happening throughout the country. So uh, this is the sum total of uh, the projects that we are doing but then uh, in a nutshell, okay. Let me just come to the um, um, under spoken tutorials and OSCAD we have uh, people who have uh, applied for. I thought we will give a brief uh, description of each of these uh, projects then you can uh, decide. The first one is uh, we have although we have called it as modeling and simulation um, framework, uh, we are going to focus on uh, something called Sandhi and open source alternative to LabVIEW. Is anybody familiar with LabVIEW here? LabVIEW? So LabVIEW is a very popular software that is used to uh, interface real world objects to uh, our computer system. So it could be to a pump, it could be a temperature uh, measurement device, it could be um, you know for example if you want to operate a lift then you would want to uh, you need a me method to connect your computer with the external object. So that uh, so we are talking about that. We have um, Aviral, I would want him to explain this uh, Sandhi work. Hello all, I am a final year dual degree student here at IIT Bombay and uh, I have been doing my dual degree project under Condenser. We have uh, developed something which we are going to show you briefly. First I will show you a video to, to explain what LabVIEW does and, and how it does, what it does. So. Pay attention to the thing right here. The thing that you can see here is a visual flow graph. A visual flow graph is something where you can uh, just go ahead, connect blocks and pretty much prototype your algorithm or ideas. So uh, but, but this software LabVIEW is very, very expensive. It's proprietary, it's expensive. We are trying to develop and we have been trying to develop an open source clone for this which would essentially mean that we could replace LabVIEW in certain control engineering applications and various other applications. For the time being, our focus is control engineering applications and we have been trying to and we have uh, pretty much prototyped a few control engineering ideas using uh, what we call Sandhi. I'll tell you more about Sandhi once uh, we finish this video. So right here, what you see is a flow graph. You have a vector source, you connect it with a block, this is called a generic block and you have two plot things. You could, you could very well see what it does here. It takes input from the vector source, it gives it to the generic block which does some computation on it and we go ahead and plot it using those plot blocks. This, is, uh, this might look very, very uh, simple on the surface but Believe me, it was very, very difficult to code it and to take it to this level because of certain problems that were there uh, with the framework that we are using. The thing that you see here is called GNU radio. It's a software radio 
which, which is essentially a flow graph that uh, people from electrical engineering uh, background have been using for quite some time. So uh, in this flow graph essentially enables you to do graphical programming. You connect code block, you connect uh, these, these uh, blocks, and what happens is, is code gets generated in the back end. The code gets generated in the back end and it is executed once you press this. Connect the flow graph and execute the flow graph button. As you see, the scope plot is plotting something. We would just go on and increase the scale and uh, you would see it's a graph. You must be pretty familiar with this. This is tan, the trigonometric tan. So, uh, so this is the generic block where the function name that I entered was tan and I could play around with certain parameters of this input block. The function name could be sign. You could, uh, the function name that you enter here is the, is the one that you see in Scilab. So what we have been uh, able to do uh, till now is, is take this DNU radio framework. We have integrated a computation engine with it, which is Scilab. We have implemented feedback. Feedback was a very, very uh, difficult thing to integrate. We, got, we collaborated with a US-based developer. He took this, the GNU radio framework and he gave us an application scheduler which can handle feedback. Feedback is, is uh, because feedback requires very unique uh, data flow. So feedback was essentially not possible using GNU radio framework. We uh, collaborated with him and we have it working in our framework in, in Sandhi. So we have feedback, we have integrated computation engine, we have also interfaced hardware. There are a couple of flow graphs that you see here. This is the flow graph where we are integrating this hardware. This, this, we are interfacing this hardware to go ahead and control the temperature of, of this device. So what happens is you set the temperature of this device and uh, which, is, which is what you do here in the constant source that you see. And what this flow graph tries to achieve is, is, is to bring the temperature of this device at the, at the value that you mentioned there in the constant source. So this is an example of, of hardware being interfaced with our framework. There is another thing that I, as, as I said, uh, we have been able to implement feedback with our system. You can see here it's, it's, it's a feedback loop. So we are capable of uh, going ahead and doing, this, this is the result that it's throwing. So in short, we have been uh, able to interface hardware run simulations using this uh, software called Sandhi. And we have, been, uh, we have been able to prototype our ideas. So uh, what do we expect you to do? We expect you to come on board, see, this, see how this software works, understand what is the how the code binds with the, the GUI that you see here, which is written entirely in Python. The, and, and we would give you all of those things. And we would also train you on how to start using these things and uh, how to start playing around with Python and uh, the XML binding with, with the Python and go ahead and deploy these things. So uh, we would be expecting you to go ahead and prototype your own ideas. As for example, there are a lot of blocks in Xcos which can be done here. So we would uh, ask you to, to take a look at those blocks, understand what it takes to to develop these, uh, to de develop and deploy these blocks, and go ahead and deploy these blocks in our framework. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it, and it's uh, very very simple now because we have developed all the tools that are required to to go ahead and do your prototyping here. So essentially, we are looking at at an open source clone for LabVIEW and Xcos combined, maybe. Uh, after our internship, we would, we would be very, very rich with, uh, with many, many more blocks which are required for control engineering applications. We would tell you about it. We'll, uh, we would train you about all these things. And we would see how you take it forward from here. And it's, it's, it's very simple and it's very, very easy now because we are giving you all the tools that are required to, to go ahead and prototype your ideas, whatever you learned in control engineering, whatever you learned about these feedback loops, if you are not very familiar with those things, it would be very, very easy to, to learn uh, these things while you're working on, on this project. 
So that's pretty much it, guys. So we would uh, be very happy if you already know Python. That's pretty much everything that is required to go ahead and do this. But if you are even at a, at a very scratchy level or you are not very familiar with Python or but you're familiar with other programming languages and you're good at it, uh, we would urge you to come ahead and join this project. You'd get to learn Python and you'd get to lo learn and uh, do amazing things with, uh, with this, this framework, with this uh, framework called Sandhi. Yeah, that's pretty much okay. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, so this, uh, let me explain what the next project is. Editor to create uh, spoken tutorials, right? How many of you have created your own screencast videos? So let me give an example. I'm going to illustrate it uh, using a software that I normally use. Uh, you can change the capture region. Okay. This is the region on the screen I record. Now, I have opened uh, Scilab here. Okay, uh, anyway, most of you are familiar with um, MATLAB, so Scilab is very similar. So what I will do is, let me see, let me start recording this. So welcome to this uh, recording, welcome to this spoken tutorial. Uh, let me just uh, create a matrix. Let me calculate the determinant of this matrix. Let me create, um, let me calculate the eigenvalues of this matrix using this bad word spectrum. Let me create a 3D plot. I think that will be good enough. Thanks for joining. Goodbye and Jai Hind. So the moment I do that, actually it has created a movie. So welcome to this uh, recording, welcome to this spoken tutorial. Uh, let me just uh, create a matrix, let me calculate the determinant of this matrix. Let me create, um, let me calculate the eigenvalues of this matrix using this bad word spectrum. Let me create a 3D plot. I think that will be good enough. Thanks for joining. Goodbye and Jai Hind. So this is uh, the second project that we had is uh, has to do with um, the creation of these. Uh, that's what I call as editor to create spoken tutorials. Uh, you, you see that when I create a spoken tutorial, whatever that comes on the screen gets recorded. Okay. In fact, that is the basis of our spoken tutorial. That, that's how we have, uh, we create them. And uh, the, that's how we train large number of students in the country. Now, I showed you the video, whatever I did on the screen got captured as one video, it is packaged. Supposing there is a mistake in that, I want to just go and edit that. So that will be difficult. What will be good is, can somebody think of a way to, supposing I show a slide, right, during my recording. During my recording, whatever comes on the screen is going to be recorded. I can show a screen, I can show a, I can show a PDF file. I can show a web page, I can even play some other video, I can record the whole thing, right? But supposing there is a mistake in one of those, say I showed a slide and there was a typing mistake, spelling mistake, right? I want to go and change that only and I, without doing anything else, I want to produce that. How would I do that? I do a sequence of activities, show a sequence of things, record them all bundle them as a video and give it to you. This one was a MOV file. It could be an MP, MP4 file, it could be an OGV file and so on. Supposing I want to, I found a mistake in only one thing. I want to change that slide for example. Replace that slide with something else. So how would I do that? You are saying replace that image with something else. Okay, that is one solution. That is definitely one other solution. Any other solution? Okay. When I said editor, I meant something else. Whatever you said is, you can go, you can do it through an editor. You can, for example, um, uh, Windows Movie Maker can be used to do the editing. Some of you might have already done that. Uh, GTK Record My Desktop can be used to create it. You can use Audacity to 
create your sound form, sound waves and attach them. You can do lots of things. But what I have here is something else. Uh, supposing I say that uh, I maintain this um, file, um, uh, supposing I maintain a project file. That project file says at this time I did this, at this time I did this. Essentially that is what it should have. It should have that at this time in this window, in this part I have something. For example, I showed you here, you now I could do actually lot of things. Uh, for example, this is a recording area. In this I could say, you know for example, I might say that let me show the terminal here, okay. Let me show something else over here. I might have two, three things. I can arrange lots of things within that rectangle. So my project file should ha say at every time what are the things present at what location. So it is that slide, it is a PDF file that I am showing. That PDF file is in that place, it is called that name and it will be shown here. Then at any time I should be and then my voice is in some other file which says synchronized. It is all done automatically. Then I say that now press a button from scratch it should produce the same thing and give me that video. So I can say that previously you used that PDF file, now I want you to use this PDF file, should be able to replace. In other words, whatever I did should be in the form of a script and I press a button it should go through the entire process, create that and give it to me. In which case I do not have to do the editing at all, I just change, replace the previous PDF file with a new PDF file with the mistakes corrected, it should automatically change that and produce that. Um, anyway, that is what I had in mind, okay. So this, uh, it is, um, I do not know how easy it is, I do not know, I have written its uh, complexity but it is actually quite difficult, uh, but anyway that is the one. The next, let me go to the next project, there are many projects that have been discussed, so let me talk about those. The next one was uh, auto code generation from Scilab, actually this is something that um, apparently we have completed most of this work. So uh, we do not, uh, we are not going to describe this auto code generation of Scilab, but then we have a few other projects that we will discuss. So we have this next one is replacement of ng spice plot with python wave plot, okay. It says Rocky Warrior and Shambhu Lingaya. So there is Rocky, you better. Uh, my name is Rocky. I am an MTech student under Professor Kannan. So uh, I will just uh, give you an overview of uh, the software called OSCAT that we have developed at IIT Bombay. And then I uh, will uh, briefly describe what are the projects that we are offering for this summer internship. So OSCAD is an acronym for open source uh, computer aided design. It is an open source equivalent of ORCAD. So uh, what OSCAD does is, OSCAD does the following. So you are able to create a schematic. So you see there, that is called a schematic. So it is essentially circuit captured on the computer screen. Then it can simulate the circuit. So I simulated the circuit and uh, so here is a waveform. So what is this? This is a bridge rectifier circuit. So this is a waveform. So this is called simulation. Okay. So uh, so this is a brief about OSCAD. OSCAD can also do a variety of things. It can create uh, models for devices such as uh, MOSFETs, BJTs. You can uh, do hierarchical modeling. You can do PCB design. So we are also coming up with uh, VHDL Verilog interface uh, with OSCAD. So, Currently we have the, now coming to the internship projects, we have the following uh, projects available for OSCAD. So you, you have seen the uh, OSCAD uh, project window or you know what is called interface. So we want somebody to uh, enhance the GUI of OSCAD. So we call it uh, a new GUI for OSCAD, so enhanced GUI for OSCAD. So we are looking at uh, uh, people who are good at programming, uh, Python, C, C++, Java, then we also want people who have uh, basic understanding of electronics, electronic circuits. So that is uh, one project that we have. We have another uh, project 
called uh, piece spice to keycad netlist conversion i'll tell you what this is so this interface that you saw i've already told you this is called a schematic or this is called a schematic editor so we currently use the schematic editing capability of a software called keycad keycad is another open source uh, tool so we use the schematic creation capability of keycad so uh, orcad the proprietary version proprietary equivalent of oscad has a similar schematic creation interface and they also have a similar uh, simulation interface so that's called p spice i'm not sure if you have heard of p spice so p spice is a part of cadence so uh, currently in various uh, engineering colleges universities across india people have already done a uh, lot of examples using p spice so what so we want people to migrate from p spice to keycat or to oscat so we want somebody to create a smooth migration or a smooth uh, you know interface wherein you give the p spice project out comes the oscat project so we call it p spice to oscat you know conversion so the underlying uh, files for any of these schematic is what is called a dot sh file it's basically a text file with some connection information component information so what we need is to write a code which will take this file parse it convert it into a form which can be understood by oscat so that is the p spice to oscat conversion work so that involves you to write code uh, scripts for parsing and uh, converting from one format to the other so that is uh, one project for the gui that you talked about what is required what what kind of it experience programming experience python is... c c++ or java okay do they need to know electronics yeah basic electronics no what if they don't know there is a computer science person she says i don't know electronics yeah I can i contribute okay. yeah okay yes. so uh, because see our people don't have experience in talking to you you should not get confused you don't think that obviously you are the right team you are you will be able to do all the projects that we talk about right so don't get you you have to see whether the underlying it work is something you can do whether it is of interest to you if so we will give all the other work okay yeah. all the other help will give so uh, yeah so gui creation there is one more component to it that is creating a web version of the software so what do you, what do you mean by web version is that uh you don't have to install the software on your computer you can access it online you can create projects online and also execute and simulate the projects online so that is what we call web version of oscat so it uh, again involves uh, basic coding in, but but we prefer you know basics of electronics for that okay i have a question Where, when would we want to use uh, web version what are the advantages disadvantages can somebody tell there is a software that can run in your local machine i am also going to make it available on the cloud on the web okay what are the advantages first okay you just need a browser so that is an advantage uh, what else any other advantage yeah in fact you can run it from maybe ipad you can uh, any simple very light device is good enough what are the disadvantages it require internet connection it requires internet connection but then it is possible to create something and leave it there we may have both versions if it is open source why don't we create that also and leave it there and uh, i i don't think once again uh, you know rocky keeps saying i need electronics background not required not required okay we have mca people doing that right so we will do that so anybody in computer science it can actually contribute even if i'm pretty sure all of you have had one course in electronics right everybody actually that is good enough so another thing is uh, so you have seen this plotting interface so we would like to replace this plotting interface uh, using the plotting facility from python fortunately does not require any electronics knowledge so that is completely software so we would obviously i mean uh, want people to have python background python coding background so that is another project open to you yeah
so that's it available for oscar thank you hello everyone so first of all i'll tell about the textbook companion project that we have uh, in python so basically what it is that student takes any any standard engineering textbook and codes the solved examples of those textbooks in python okay so we have a web interface for that. That's called uh, TBC. I have in Python dot dot in. You can check it out. Uh, so the interface is currently under development. I mean, students are using it already to upload their notebooks, and the coding that is done is done in IPython notebook format. How many of you know about IPython? So IPython notebook basically is a uh, browser-based interface where you can code in Python, do plotting and stuff like that. Whatever you do in normal Python, you can do it on a browser. Okay. It runs on your local host, I mean local machine. Here is the activity you have, you are, I was talking about. So we have the interface ready. Now what we want to do is, uh, we want to set up an, uh, what you can say is, like students, can, students should be able to run the IPython notebooks online. Like they, if they want to edit some parameters of some pro program, okay. So suppose there's a plot and you want to just edit some parameters and see what results could be coming out. So you, so these notebooks should be, should be able to open online and you can edit it online. Okay. So that is all we are trying to do. So these are the books that we already have. So this is a notebook. Okay. This is, this work is done some by contributor to the project. Okay. So you, now we, what we want to do is edit, we want to open this in an editable mode. Okay. Let me just, uh, I think you don't know what a textbook companion is. How many of you know about it? A textbook companion. Okay. One of the projects that we started at IIT to support open source software was to create documents. Most people like coding, right? But most students especially like coding, but they hate documentation. And because of lack of documents, people are not able to use open source software, okay? The other problem actually is coding is, uh, coding is a lot easier than documentation. Documentation is a boring work and you have to do a lot of uh, this, it has to be correct and grammatically correct, <coughs> properly structured and so on, which is actually boring, right, to do all that, right. People will say, I would rather write a code, not document, okay. At the beginning of this project, we said that let us create documentation for open source software so that people know how to use open source software. And then, so we need people to do them, to create the open source, I mean, this documentation. And um, we have lots of students, but they hate documentation. So how do we solve this problem? We wanted to use students and address the documentation problem. So we said, let's solve the inverse problem. What is the inverse problem? For existing documents, create code. For existing documents, create code using students, students like you. So we created, we came up with this idea called textbook companion. He talked about uh, Python textbook companion. We also have Scilab textbook companion, we have Oscar textbook companion and so on. So if you say that for this particular, let's say book, textbook, MATLAB is useful. If MATLAB is useful, then Scilab is also equally useful. So you say that for every solved problem, I will give Scilab code. Okay, I'll give an example. So we actually put this Scilab textbook companion on the cloud, right? So you want to choose uh, subject, we have all these, uh, for all these uh, topics, we have textbook companions available. In fact, 300 textbook companions have been finished in Scilab, another 300 are going to be completed. Basically the idea is, any textbook you use, Scilab code is available. Similarly, any textbook is available, you have Python textbook, Python textbook companion is available. So I will demonstrate this, are you familiar with any of these topics? Choose something else. Because it turns out Scilab is not the greatest uh, tool for computer programming. Thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, wow. Who said fluid mechanics? Who said fluid mechanics? Okay, you'll have to select, uh, you'll have to select the next one then. Okay? Which book? <laughs> you want to change that? Digital electronics? Okay, it's good to digital electronics. Okay, what book? What chapter? Chapter number. Something code. Okay. It's going to give some result. I mean, you can modify it. Okay. So no big deal. But let me take uh, something. Okay. 
Now I can, uh, this is body plot. It's going to plot something. I can download, save it. I can modify it. Here it is. And then it gives all this. I can actually edit this. For example, I can change this to 5,000. I can execute this. So instead of 2,500, it will become 5,000. And all the values will change. So we have done this for about 500 books. Uh, 600 actually will be very soon. Similar thing is being done for Python. This is what uh, Hardik has been telling. So here is, uh, um, uh, now this is some sizing pneumatic systems, 16.1, page 422 of some book, whatever that book is. And here is the code, and uh, you can actually execute this. Okay, now you go ahead. Yeah, so currently what we have is, you cannot edit this code online, just as you saw, saw it for Scilab. So we want to develop some, something similar to that, okay? The student should be able to edit the code, edit parameters, and see the results. Nevertheless, if it, regardless, he has Python on his machine, all you need is a browser, okay? That is what we, are, we want to do. So basic requirements for this would be, you should be familiar with Python, and there's a framework called Django. Anybody know about Django? So Django is a very powerful Python framework. So you, basic requirements are Python and Django. You have to have some coding knowledge with Python and Django. And UI UX, if you know about UI UX, CSS, JavaScript, that would be a plus. Another activity is similar to this. You see the books here, here. these are all reviewed, okay? We need to check the standards and see everything. So for that, also, we need a reviewer for the books, okay? He needs to review the codes and see if it matches the standards that we have. We have some guidelines for a student to contribute to this project. So you should see if the book that he has coded should match the standard, should match the guiding, coding guidelines and everything. So that's the work of a reviewer. For this, you need to know only Python and some scientific computing libraries like NumPy, SciPy, SymPy. That is what we need. Thank you. So that's the sum total of our uh, topics. Thank you. <laughs>